Well, good morning. My name is Boris Castel, and I'm a nuclear physicist. And I'm going just to take three or four minutes of your time by telling you what I do to explain what nuclear physics is all about now. We don't get involved with nuclear weapons, not anymore. I don't deal with nuclear reactors. So what are we doing, really, for humanity? Well, I'm aware of that question often because I travel. And I always like to discuss during my trips, what do we do to cost so much to humanity, either in terms of finances or in terms of war? I usually take a friend with me, this little Marioshka. Why? Because I think she has a lot to tell us about what physicists do in general and what nuclear physicists do in particular. The whole idea is for us to learn how to differentiate between science, reality, and appearance. This Marioshka looks beautiful. <clears throat> and we all know that this is a very good image for our description of reality. We open Marioshka, then there is another one, and that's really the picture of the, the microscopic universe. Well, that's just the appearance. I spend most of my life dealing with things that we can't see, because if you were to look at the simplest element, hydrogen, one proton, one electron, if um, the proton was the size of my Marioshka, the, the first electron and the only electron will be in New York State. So life for a nuclear physicist is really dealing with empty space and with your imagination. So we have learned <clears throat> that nuclear weapons, nuclear reactors, all what we associate with nuclear physics is really <clears throat> a scientific, a real description of empty space. And yet empty space, scientifically speaking, can tell us a lot about our own reality. What we have to know, as we have to learn in science, is to differentiate between the real Marioshka and the image we take to describe reality in beautiful colors and beautiful shapes. There is another very, very nice problem that uh, nuclear physicists have been involved in the uh, last few years. It's a problem which we see every night. It's not really a problem for most of us. In fact, every night we see night coming. We are accustomed to this event. And yet 99.9% .9 of the population cannot differentiate between the reality of existence, night and day, and explain why it's night at night. Einstein didn't know the explanation. Only nuclear physicists and astronomers have an idea, and only a recent idea, of why it's dark at night. So the appearance here is the beautiful reality of existence. It's, uh, Night time, we can go out and so on, but we can't explain why it's dark. And the reason why it's really a problem is that we are surrounded by lots of sun. In fact, we are surrounded by billions of sun, billions of stars, billions of galaxies, all shining. And even Einstein couldn't understand why it's still dark at night with all this beautiful universe shining at us. We begin now mostly because of the work of nuclear physicists, to understand that if indeed we all started from a Big Bang, then all those stars, all those Earths, all these suns, are still in this big explosion universe. And indeed, all of them move away from us. For the last 13.5 billion years, we have been left alone on a little piece of universe when all the shining elements, which would give us sun at night, disappear from us. This huge explosion is still taking place. And that's probably the best explanation for why it's dark at night. Of course, we can enjoy night, night time, without having to know why. But our own personal curiosity at some stage 
is likely to come and require some kind of explanation. That's where nuclear physics and nuclear physicists are likely to be useful. And to be useful, we have to have some kind of image to create some kind of enthusiasm for science, for children, for students. So Mariushka is always with me. And of course, if I lose one, I have others. Thank you.